We're live. It's 2.08 Central. And uh, two explosions at Boston Marathon. People hurt in large explosions. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. And that'll... Uh, I mean, well, are they going to blame it on Iran? Blame it on the Patriot group? Or is it going to be a veteran or something? I mean, this is just so horrible. Uh, and, uh, again, I hope nobody's really been hurt bad. And also hope it's a gas main uh, or or something like that. Uh, because they will, again, they're going to turn all public events. First, it's have checkpoints at the airport. Then it's the mall. Then it's the sports stadium. Then it's the hotel. Then it's the highway. Then it's the bus station. This is already in Austin. Uh, then it's Army at the Kite Festival. Uh, then it's, oh, any event has to have, you know, troops set it. Drudge now running the headline, explosions at Boston Marathon. And it goes, multiple people injured, at least a dozen injured uh, after explosion. Uh, man, I hope this isn't a false flag or a real terror attack, Richard. Even if it's innocent, they will use it because everyone's focused on it now. And people can be controlled when they're all on the same emotion at the same time. You know, the government's been studying this since, you know, World War One. Pulling cash Let's fade this up. There's a whole CNN? process underway right now, but the reality of the situation is it is almost impossible to protect an event, especially one that is over a protracted space as a We're marathon help. is. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but these are the times that we live in. Uh, Richard, that's what, what they're so saying on CNN. Uh, so they're already basically saying it's a terror attack. Oh, my yeah. goodness. No, we're helpless is what he's saying. I know this. They got TSA ready to roll out nationwide. They're already doing it, but they've, they've been, I've talked to insiders. They're going to be everywhere now, just federal checkpoints. When he said, you know, unfortunately, these are the times we live in. So then when we, when we see soldiers at our kids' Little League game, we see soldiers, you know, everywhere. Well, we're supposed to feel safe. But again, the explosion, the main one there at the Marathon Sports, and then you can hear after that, Paula, it's just absolutely heartbreaking to see this. this it's is... been a year since the bomb attack at the Boston Marathon. InfoWars was pointing out the inconsistencies in the story from the very beginning. Was there any prior knowledge, though? Because according to BostonGlobe.com, they said they were doing drills this morning for the same exact thing that happened, according to BostonGlobe.com. Now, was you guys given any warning ahead of time of this uh, uh, taking place? As I said earlier, there was no specific intelligence. Oh, well, sir, why were loudspeakers telling people in the audience to be calm moments before the bomb went off? Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security uh, sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? No. And it wasn't just the Boston Globe who reported the drills. There was dogs uh, with their handlers going around sniffing um, for explosives, and, and we were told on a um, loud announcement that we shouldn't be concerned if this was just a drill. So may, may, maybe it was just a drill. Um, but I've just never seen a, a, a drill like that. The most show of force that a track coach has seen in a lifetime of marathons. This brings up questions of prior knowledge. And on the subject of prior knowledge, we found out that the CIA, FBI, and DHS knew of Tamlin Zarnaev before the bombing. Reports show that the older Zarnaev had previously attended a workshop sponsored by the CIA. The word is also out that the FBI and Department of Homeland Security had been tipped to Tamlin's visit to a radical mosque in Dagestan, a neighbor of Chechnya. The FBI felt that this was of little consequence and didn't consider him a threat. Also, the suspect's uncle Ruslan, who quickly distanced himself from his nephews, worked for USAID. As the article points out, the U.S. Agency for International Development is an agency used by the U.S. government to operate humanitarian NGOs instrumental in running color revolutions in former Soviet states. And he just so happened to be the relative of choice for state-run media. I understand that there must be several criminals and other people on U.S. databanks, especially with the DHS putting toddlers on the no-fly list. But if you have a suspect who the Russian government warned you about, attended CIA-backed workshops that the DHS was briefed on and the FBI interviewed, why does the FBI need public assistance identifying the suspect? Not to mention how the feds reportedly called the Zarnayev brothers after the bombing and before any other incidents. Somebody out there knows these individuals as friends, neighbors, co-workers, or family members of the suspects. 
Though it may be difficult, the nation is counting on those with information to come forward and provide it to us. Did you ask any of your co-workers their agents? Aside from Stonewall and InfoWars reporter Dan Badandi, goons got in his face for dare asking real questions. Are both suspects seen planting these devices at the finish line of the Boston Marathon? No. The only one who was observed planting what we believe to be the device is suspect number two with a white cap. Let's talk about those photos. Those bomb drills Monday morning. We got photographs on InfoWars.com, folks. Uh, Next question, please. Jahar's white or gray backpack with the black stripes is clearly not the black backpack with the white or gray stripes that exploded. In fact, the bags are the exact opposite. The only official photos that should be officially relied upon in this investigation are those you see before you today. So what's the possible explanation for these bizarro backpacks? And you're carrying a backpack. We have one here. This is a white color nylon backpack. Like, like, like number two hat. Yeah. And then it's easy enough for you to go ahead and take out... Uh, the actual device that may house the weapon. There's one theory. Doubt of the official story could easily been squashed by releasing footage of the bomb being placed. Footage that even Governor Deval Patrick hasn't seen. Well, the, the videotape uh, is not something I've seen. It's been described to me. Uh, but it does uh, seem to, uh, to be pretty clear that, um, that uh, uh, this suspect took the backpack uh, off put it down. And that brings up another piece of questionable footage. Who was the naked man? InfoWars reporter David Knight contacted Moret Zarnaev, the aunt of the suspects, who identified the stripped man as her nephew Tamerlan. Hello. Uh, hello, is this Merit Zarnaev? Yes, speaking. Hi, my name is David Knight. I'm with InfoWars.com. Uh, it's Alex Jones's operation. Have you heard of us? Yes, I've heard of you. Yes. And we would very much like to do an interview with you. Would that be possible? Since, since I have seen the material that you presented for the public before about the invasive bombing, even before the names of our boys were put out there, I was following you, you know, from the very beginning. Okay. I don't know. I have trust in that information. I have trust in you. And I would, I would like, I would like to have my word said. Good, good. Especially in the part when the, the guy that is, that was uh, taken into custody by police then uh, given over to FBI, you know who I'm talking about, that, yes. that clip. Yes, yes. A the, naked guy. Yes. I have to, I have to publicly state that I confirm and identify this person as my nephew, Tamerlan Sarnaev. Moret's revelation has been widely ignored by the media. The outlets that did pick up the naked man's arrest quickly wrote him off as somebody who was not really a suspect in the first place. Before we go any further, let's talk about what the brothers allegedly did after the bombing, aside from reportedly talking to the FBI as we mentioned earlier. The story goes that the two had a seemingly normal life. Jahar went back to school, but after being named suspects, the brothers went on the run and allegedly killed an MIT officer to get his gun, thus the story goes. To date, there is no DNA evidence or public photographic evidence that the brothers actually killed the officer in his patrol car. And just like with the placing of the bomb, the authorities want you to believe in footage that they refuse to show you. So where did this story come from? It's a theory that the brothers wanted a gun and targeted someone who would have one. But whoever killed Officer Collier didn't bother to take his weapon. Now let me be very clear, this is in no way to tarnish the image of the slain officer. All due respect to him and his family. I'm simply pointing out how hearsay surrounding his death is now considered gospel. But what about the carjacking victim? Didn't the brothers confess to him? Well, there are conflicting narratives concerning that too. Briefly, the carjacking victim known as Danny reported a movie-like escape from the Zarnaev brothers. But before he got away, Danny says Tamerlan confessed to killing the MIT officer as well as a role in the bombing. Contrast that with an earlier interview where Danny says Tamerlan mentioned the bombing but said nothing of the MIT shooting. Draw your own conclusion there. Oh, and the 7-Eleven robbery that took place, that wasn't the Zarnaev brothers. When the government and the shadow government has been gearing up to roll out and be our savior, and, 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 and they stand to gain from it, it's obvious. I mean, whoever the suspect is, the government will uh, appropriate it and create a narrative.
and and ninety percent of it probably, I'm just guessing, will be a fabrication to shape our thought of police and military and safety and they're licking their chops. They're now saying were there right wing or patriot meetings in the area? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh man. And that's CNN doing that? Oh. Wolf Blitzer, we are in trouble. Oh, man. I bet they even dragged me into it with my 1776 line. That was footage from the, quote, shootout between the Tsarnaev brothers and the police. This is one of the most contradictory moments following the bombing, with various witnesses contesting whether or not the suspects tossed bombs at the police, whether or not an officer was injured by friendly fire, and whether or not Jahar ran over Tamerlan. If the naked man is Tamerlan Zarnaev as his aunt claims, then the official story has much to explain as to how a bullet-wounded man was struck by a car and appears virtually uninjured. Regardless of what happened, after the confrontation with the police, Jahar is able to go and hide himself in a boat, and Tamerlan is taken into custody, according to his aunt. The police state rolled into Watertown with a vengeance, intimidating media, forcing people out of their homes at gunpoint. Door-to-door -door armed searches without warrant. Police don't need warrants if property owners welcome, welcome them into their homes. Families thrown out of their homes at gunpoint to be searched without probable cause. No guns were pointed at any families. Let's watch that clip again covered by footage of what actually happened. Door-to-door -door armed searches without warrant. Police don't need warrants if property owners welcome, welcome them into their homes. Families thrown out of their homes at gunpoint to be searched without probable cause. No guns were pointed at any families. But as you saw with your own eyes, people were forced out of their homes and had guns pointed at them. In the end, it was a homeowner who called the police to report suspicious activity in his boat. Police responded, fired multiple rounds into the boat, and I'm sure were shocked when Jahar was able to climb out of the boat under his own power. He is bloodied, but doesn't yet seem to have the wound in his mouth that would be reported later. If he indeed shot himself through the mouth, I doubt he'd be this mobile, and it's a pretty safe bet that he'd be suffering much heavier blood loss. Jahar is currently in custody awaiting trial. His brother Tamerlan is now deceased. But even with one suspect dead and another in jail, the story didn't end there. An acquaintance of Tamerlan was killed during an FBI interrogation. The FBI's story changed multiple times as to how their agent felt his life was in danger. Whether it was Todashev's martial arts skills or a potential weapon in his hands, the FBI agent shot Todashev execution style, according to Todashev's father. InfoWars talked to Todashev's widow about the killing. That night I was actually in Atlanta, Georgia. I was about seven hours away from there. I was at work when it happened. And um, this is not what exactly he said. He, he felt strange about it. He said, this is not the first interview that was coming over and they called him, they told him that it's going to be, this is going to be his last interview. The agents from Boston, they come in to speak with him and he said, you guys, I'm just tired of coming to your office. If you want to speak with me, you can come to my house. And he said that if anything happens to me, just say, say, don't, don't be quiet. Just say what happened to me. If anything happens, he wasn't scared. If he would, he probably would not even speak with them in the first place. But since he even invited him to, he, to our home, that means he wasn't scared of them. And um, they have interviewed him. He would not respond to his cell phone or anything. And um, they have his friend waiting him outside. But suddenly they let him go after four hours. Um, and some of the agents still were still with Ibrahim. And as right now, they've been pulling so many statements that he was armed and he was unarmed and that he was um, his body was a weapon since he's an MMA, MMA fighter. But he just had his knee surgery back in March. So he wasn't able to move pretty quick, pretty fast or do anything. And um, after we actually, after already all that happened, we when we was able to enter the house, um, he had seven shots. One was in the back of the head, and 
not, it has nothing to do with him uh, start attacking them as as they said they're coming with the knife with the blade with the broom